Hello friends, welcome to Insights Icon Initiative and this is the second week regarding the weekly current affairs. In the last Sunday, we started this initiative about weekly current affairs and this is the week 2. Let us see in this week 2 which topics we are going to discuss. And I am really happy that I got a very good response regarding the week 1. Okay, I hope this kind of weekly current issues will add lot of value addition to your preparation. Okay, in this week two, we are going to discuss about these two, these seven topics, and they are picked up from different areas, such as one is from the IR, the other one is from the SNT, the other one is from the par, you know, like polity as parliament sessions are going on, then the other one is economy, then environment, and one is science and technology again, and finally geography. That means topics picked from various range. Okay, so try to. So follow this video and if you get any doubts, please put your doubts in comments along with your answers. Okay. Now without any further delay, let us go to the first topic that is the Kuril Islands. So first you have to know when we are discussing about I IR international relations or geography, the map pointing is very important. Now we are discussing about Kuril Islands. These Kuril Islands are present in between the Japan and Russia. Now some people in Japan they are expressing opinions that it is the best time now Japan can claim the Kuril Islands. So far, the Kuril Islands under the administration of Russia. Where are these Kuril Islands are present? These Kuril Islands are located between the Sea of Oakstok and the Northern Pacific Ocean. Between these two, the sea, these Kuril Islands are located. Broadly, these Kuril Islands, they look like it is an extension of Hokkaido. Hokkaido was one of the largest province of Japan. From Hokkaido, they look like extension 1, 2, 3, 4, major 4 islands. Okay. Previously, Japan was historically claiming these islands, and since World War II, since 1949 mainly, Russia was claiming, and these are under the administrative control of Russia. Now, Japan, some of the experts in Japan, they are opinion that as Russia is occupied in the Ukraine war, now Russia is diplomatically separated, it is the best time to claim these islands back to Japan. This is the crux of this issue. Now let us go through the notes. Kuril Islands, Russia and Ukraine, the war is going on and few people are saying that it is the best time to take control over these islands. They are located between the Sea of Oakstok and between the Pacific Ocean like I said earlier. Japan call these islands as Northern Territories and Russia call them as Kuril Islands and South Korea call them as Dogdo Islands. And these islands present falls within the Pacific Ring of fire and these islands consist of around 100 volcanoes out of these 100 volcanoes around 35 volcanoes are said to be active volcanoes at the present day then the issue of sovereignty like i said earlier both russia and japan claiming so japan claiming by quoting these particular treaties such as shimoda treaty 1855 and the 1875 treaty of exchange between the sakline for the kuril islands that means Japan given the Sakhalin region for Kuril Islands and Portsmouth Treaty of 1905. This treaty was made after the, you know, like Russia Japan war where Japan won on Russia. Of course, this was also inspiration to the India's Swadeshi movement, which was in 1905. Okay, 1905 Swadeshi movement. The contemporary, you have to learn in that way. Okay, students, then Russia was claiming. Kuril Islands based on Yalta Agreement, Postdam Agreement, San Francisco Treaty of 1951. In the San Francisco Treaty 1951, Article 2 saying that Japan given up all the rights, title and claims on the Kuril Islands. This was a Russia view. And Russia quoting this as a legal evidence over the Kuril Islands. So this is the first issue that is Kuril Islands that is IR. Second one, Akira Ransomware. Akira ransomware. You know, students, ransomware is a type of malicious software which demands money from the user. Okay, this particular ransomware name now whatever the name we are discussing, this is the Akira. Why we why it named as Akira ransomware? Because in this ransomware type files they were stored with an extension of Akira. You know that extension means when you say Word document lost, you will find DOC or DOCX pptx dot pptx so in this way the file extension saved in the name of akira a k i r a with that extension that is the reason we are calling this as akira ransomware normally any ransomware if it attack to your electronic devices 
it will encrypt all the information in your device and they demand certain money how they will demand the money they leave a text document in your laptop or desktop if you click the text document it will give the information about okay it will give passwords after you enter that password then you whatever the amount they are demanding it get to know generally it will be in the bitcoins or it will be in the money generally it will be in the bitcoins only this is a ransomware ransomware is all about the demands a ransom ransom means demanding money because of you know like stopping someone's activities recently india's computer emergency response team this is a team which responds to cyber attacks in india you know the cyber attacks comes under the provision of it act it act 2000 okay in it act very controversial provision used to be there section 66a if you remember tell me students in which landmark judgments supreme court struck down the section 66a okay put your answer in the comments how it mechanism mechanism is it encrypt the data and it create the ransomware and it will delete your windows copies you know like whatever the copies remain in your system related to this ransomware so that they prevent the tracking down of this virus okay reason behind the name the file extensions they were saved on the name of the akira dot akira next how it works already told you how it works it will encrypt your data and you will unable to access that information and how this sensitive data will be stolen normally when someone you know like uh, uh, unaware of this kind of attack they when they download certain files or when they click on the any phishing emails through that this kind of malicious software will be downloaded and it leaves like a text document text note and that text note will drive you how to pay and all these things how to negotiate and all these things and it is not guarantee that after you pay set that amount you will get that key so that you you can access your files it is not guarantee that the only thing is individual users they have to be very careful while using this kind of internet connected electronic devices that is about the akira ransomware here the most take away point was set okay computer and emergency response team that one you have to understand and ransomware that one you have to understand third one privilege motion you know students privilege privilege are special rights enjoyed by the member of parliament privileges are applicable to both mps of lok sabha as well as rajya sabha article 105 of the indian constitution deals with the privileges if a member privilege is violated then the other members they'll give notice to the presiding officer of the house and presiding officer of the house they refer those notices to the privilege committee so as a upsc aspirant you have to know constitution provision related to privilege and you have to know the composition of the privilege committee that composition i will explain now first let us see the context the context is the rajya sabha chairman referred complaints related to privileges okay these complaints were against whom it was against to to rajya sabha mps and this complaint referred to privilege committee referred by presiding officer you know the students the presiding officer for rajya sabha is always the vice president of india in the ex officio category next privilege motion i told you already when members rights are affected then privilege motion will come into force there are no codified privileges okay there is no set of privileges this privileges are normally they are you know like they come according to the rules of the house members have collective privileges and individual privileges individual privilege such as right to freedom of speech whatever the members speak in the house that cannot come in the jurisdiction of the court that cannot be questioned in the court okay and whichever the way the member votes that is also cannot be questioned in the court and the collective privileges such as members cannot be arrested 40 days before or 40 days after the session of course it is not applicable to criminal cases and if police wanted to arrest anyone within the vicinity of the house then presiding officer permission has to be taken so these are some of the privileges enjoyed in terms of collectively as well as individually okay then if member privileges are breached then privilege committee look after us generally privilege motion will be given under art rule 203 of the house this privilege committee consists of 10 is 15 members 
Lok Sabha. It draws from ten members from Lok Sabha and it draws fifteen five members from the Rajya Sabha. Who will head? Okay, I mean it consists of ten members in case of Lok Sabha and five members in case of Rajya Sabha. Don't get confused. They are not combined committees. They are individual committees. In Lok Sabha, this committee will be headed by the person who nominated by the speaker. Whereas in Rajya Sabha, the deputy chairman of the Rajya Sabha will head the privilege committee of Rajya Sabha. That you have to remember. The fourth topic. The fourth one is regarding the foreign exchange reserve. Foreign exchange reserve. Okay. So why we are discussing now? We are discussing the foreign exchange reserve because recently India's foreign exchange reserves declined by 1.9 billion dollars. Now it is at 607 billion dollars. You know that students, foreign exchange dollars means foreign exchange reserves means the money which can be or the the asset which can be used by India to pay international transactions. This is about the foreign exchange. Foreign exchange can be held in any currency. It can be in the form of uh, Japan currency. It can be in the USA currency. But generally, we maintain in terms of dollars because the dollar is the international currency. In this context, we we have to know who will handle the foreign exchange reserve and how the foreign exchange reserve will be maintained. That means in which forms. Okay, let us discuss foreign exchange reserves. Foreign exchange reserves are these are the assets maintained by RBI in foreign currencies. But generally, majority in which form of currency? Dollar, because it is the internationally acceptable one. This foreign exchange reserves includes four different categories: foreign currency, and foreign bonds, treasury bills, and other government securities. It can be in any form. And generally, these are expressed in the form of dollars. Already I told you the reason behind that. RBI is the one which maintains the foreign exchange reserves. So we can say RBI is the custodian of the foreign exchange reserves. Broadly, foreign exchange reserves can be put under four categories. Number one, foreign currency assets. This will be in the form of foreign currencies. Second one, in terms of gold, and third one, in terms of the special drawing rights, it will be with the IMF. And the fourth one is the reserve trench position (RTP). The main dis difference between the RTP and special drawing rights is when you are drawing money from the special drawing rights, there are certain obligations on you. You have to do certain duties. Like implementing the economic reforms like that. When you are drawing money from the reserve trends position, there are no obligations. That means without any obligation, a member nation can withdraw certain amount of the money from the reserve trends position. Okay. Next, the biggest contribution to our foreign exchange reserves is number one, foreign currency, and the second biggest contribution is gold. Now let us see why we have to maintain good amount of the foreign exchange reserves. The reason is whatever the debts we have to pay, that will be paid in the form of foreign exchange reserves. And whenever there is a lot of demand for dollar in our domestic currency, at that time, RBI will release dollars so that way the demand for the dollar will less, and that will also stop the devaluation of the rupee. Because as the demand for dollar will grow up, the rupee value will decrease, that may lead to the depreciation of the rupee. To stop that, RBI will release dollars whenever the demand for dollar is very high. And if a country is having lot of foreign exchange reserves, that means that have lot of confidence in the international market, and so much investment also will come to the country. Okay, so these are some of the advantages of having the good amount of the foreign exchange reserves. And other countries also they were very sure about their repayment capacity of the country. Because already they are having lot of foreign exchange reserves, they don't worry about the repayment of the country. That is about the foreign exchange reserves. The next topic is it is about the environment. Here we are going to discuss about the Himalayan vulture. Why we are discussing? We are discussing that because for the first time in India and the second time in the world, we successfully done the captive breeding. Captive breeding means the breeding which is in the controlled condition. That is known as captive breeding. Breeding can be occur in nature, or as well as the breeding can be occur in the captive condition. Captive means these animals are captured within the enclosure or within the boundaries. The Himalayan vulture. India is the first country. I mean, in terms of first time in India and second in terms of the world. India is the second country in the world, as well as the first time in India we done the captive breeding of the vulture, Himalayan vulture. Okay. Where it was done? It was done in the Assam state zoo in Gauhati. 
and his project was taken up by Bombay Natural History Society as well as the Assam Forest Department. Again, now let us see some of the information regarding this particular bird. This Himalayan vulture, scientific name Gyps himalayalensis or Himalayan griffin. These vultures are old world vultures. So tell me students, if you are somewhat enthusiastic about environment, tell me what is the difference between the old world vulture as well as the new world vulture. Okay. So try to enquire about and put your comments in the comment section. Description, they are containing the white head and the wing spread is also very large. White head. Okay. Himalayan vulture. Let us see where they are located, where their presence is there. Native to Himalayas, Tibetan Plateau and also present in the Central Asian mountains. Generally, these are diurnal and they are solitary species. That means they are not like crows. Okay. Crows are the one in the groups they travel. These are the solitary species. Conservation status. In terms of IUCN conservation category, it is a near threatened category. Actually, India hosts around nine different types of vultures. One among that is Himalayan vulture and rest of them are here. I included oriental white-backed, long-billed, slender-billed, Himalayan red-headed. Okay, these are the nine species. By the way, I am going to include this PPT in this video description. Check it. Next topic we are going to discuss. This is also related to SND that is about the Samudrayan. Recently, the Minister of this Earth Sciences, they made one announcement regarding the Samudrayan. And in this context, we will discuss about what is the Samudrayan and what is this project is all about, who are participant, participants in this project and what is about Matsya 6000. We are going to discuss about all this information. Samudrayan, it is India's first manned ocean mission. That means we are going to send individuals, men into the deep of the ocean. Okay. For sending men into the ocean, deep ocean, we are using one, one you know, like one instrument, one you know, like one vehicle. That vehicle is known as Matsya 6000. It takes around 12 hours, both to and fro journey, and the duration it is going to stay. And the normal operation is about 96 hours in case of emergency. Up to 96 hours also, it can withstand. We will discuss further details regarding the Matsya 6000. Matsya 6000, and India is going to be the you know, like sixth nation, if India performs this successfully, why it is in news. Recently, Union Minister of Earth Sciences announced in the parliament that India is in the process of launching the Himalayan, this sorry, Samudrayan project. Under this, they are going to send three individuals into the deep ocean of around 6,000 meters in a vehicle. That vehicle is known as Matsya 6000. It is going to be the India's first manned mission. Even we are on track to send man, I mean, first manned mission towards the space also, Gaganyan. If you remember, tell me students, which country is training our astronauts? Okay, which country is training our astronauts as a part of the Gaganyan? This mission is not going to disturb ecosystem of the ocean. It is only about the exploring deep ocean as well as study about the biodiversity in the deep ocean. It is a part of the, it is a part of the deep ocean mission which is undertaken by the government of India as a part of the explore, exploring the blue economy. And who acts as a nodal ministry? Ministry of Earth Sciences act as a nodal ministry. Nodal ministry means they are going to coordinate all the activities related to this deep ocean. Who are the active participants? Active participants are ISRO as well as the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology and DRDO. These are the active participants in this mission. And which vehicle we are using, using here? Matsya 6000. This Matsya 6000 it is a part of the Samudrayan mission and it is developed by NIOT. NIOT. And which minerals we are mainly targeting to explore? Nickel, cobalt, rare earths as well as the manganese. The estimated year, estimated time of launching this 2024 to 2025. And if it is a successful then India is going to be the one among the six countries which had successful deployment of these projects. Previously, US, Russia, Japan, France and China. Five countries are there. India is going to be the sixth one. Matsya 6000. It was made up of titanium. Titanium and three navigators, they are going to be so sent to the 6000 meter depth. From where? Almost 1500 kilometers away from the Kanyakumari. 
okay and you know why this is very important because the 6000 meters means the level of pressure is very high and this vessel has to withstand the amount of the pressure that is very very important that is the reason we use this titanium hull and regarding the matsya 6000 some more information is india is allowed to explore up to 6000 meters only not beyond that okay i mean the region which we allocated who allocates this exploration region there is a process known as international seabed authority they will allocate that which country can explore which region of the ocean so we got the region around central indian ocean basin as well as the as yes, this is the basin basin what is the area of this 75000 square kilometer there india can explore such such polymetallic nodules and recently unvo is also considering the modified international law regarding the sea normally uh, this international seas are regulated by un clause united nation convention on law of sea now recently unvo passed a resolution that we are going to update this according to the future commitment because already we committed that by 2030 at least 30 percentage of the ocean should be preserved the next topic the last one is regarding the mahanadi river why we are discussing the mahanadi river because recently odisha government given a flood alert in the mahanadi basin area mahanadi is a river majorly it flows through states such as chatisgarh and odisha in this topic we are going to discuss the further details regarding the mahanadi river and there is a very popular barrage is also there dam is also there on the mahanadi river and certain tributaries and chilka lake all these are related to mahanadi river what is the government recently they alerted certain mile certain you know like medium floods in the mahanadi river system it is a one of the major east flowing river actually in terms of the irrigation potential after godavari this is the second largest river in terms of the irrigation potential mahanadi its originates in the shiva re, shiva sihava range in damtari district of chatisgarh state you know students chatisgarh is the state which is having the largest area under the left wing extremism that also you have to remember the length of this river 860 kilometers and it will join with the bay of bengal it flows in the south southeastern direction through chatisgarh and odisha major catchment area sir chatisgarh odisha and the minor catchment areas are jharkhand maharashtra and madhya pradesh catchment area means the irrigation area or the area which is depend on the water of this particular river major cities located along this river raipur sambalpur and katak the river boundaries this river bounded on northern direction by central indian hills and in the southern and eastern direction by eastern ghats and in the western side this bound by the maikal hill range some of the tributaries of this river these are sianoth river jhang river hasdia river and mand river these are some of the rivers related to tributaries related to this river you know that in india or else world's largest earthen dam hiraku dam is present on this river chilka lake around 60 percentage of the chilka lake water they fed by tributaries related to this mahanadi river those rivers which are feeding water to chilka lake they are daya river and bargabi river these are the rivers which feed or water to the chilka lake chilka lake is also the ramsar wetland sites you know that like i said earlier it is the second in terms of the potential irrigation potential after river godavari now yesterday video question is tropical wet evergreen type and western god certain description is there and this description fit to which national park the answer is kudremukh national park d let's see second question which of the following conservation reserves are correctly matched which one is correctly matched sariska rightly matched to rajasthan rest of the two they are not rightly matched okay pakya tiger reserve related to arunachal pradesh but not to assam third one which of the following national parks are located in andaman nicobar islands which one one and two only indira gandhi national park not related to andaman nicobar islands now let's see today's video question okay students today's question consider the following statement regarding the samudrayaan project read these two statements and answer which one is correct 
which one is correct related to Samudrayan mission. Second one, consider the following statement regarding the Himalayan vulture and please examine these two statements and check which one is right. And the third one, Kuril Island, which was recently seen in news, located between. Kuril Island is located between which sea? So this is about today's video question. As we reach to the end of the video, just we will do some recap what topics we discussed. In this weekly current affairs week 2 program, we discussed about these 7 topics students and give your view or a review regarding this weekly current affairs initiative and if you are looking forward for any such kind of subject oriented or theme based you know like videos, feel free to put your views in comment section. And this is the detailed analysis regarding the weekly current affairs week 2.